Well, good morning. God bless you, people of God. This is Pastor Randy James of the River of God coming to you this morning uh, yeah, to worship the Lord with you uh, by way of his word. We are grateful that God has been good to us all week long. He has watched over us. He has kept us from danger, seen and unseen. And I don't know about you, but I'm always excited when it is time to worship. Uh, although we live a life of worship, there is this set time where we set aside to express our love and appreciation and fellowship for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I believe that God is still on his throne. He's still working miracles. He's still in charge. He's still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask and or think. I believe we serve a great God. I want to thank you for joining us this morning uh, as we're coming to you uh, with the word of the Lord today. And God has given us a word for you and for ourselves. I never say, you know, it's a, it's a terrible cook that don't eat their own cooking. And so God has given a word for all of us because his word is life. His word is empowerment. His word is joy. His word reveals him, him, reveals him to us and gives us the ability to connect with God like never before. Before we go any longer, for, further, let me pray. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for your life, your death, and your resurrection. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to live with us and in us, to lead us and guide us. Thank you for healing us, saving us, delivering us, leading and guiding us, giving us your peace that surpasses all understanding. Yet in the midst of this world, being still in us and with us, leading and guiding us, shaping us, directing us, that we may have the life that you intended for us. And we give you the praise for it now. And God, I ask you, let thy word come forth with demonstration and power, God. Let it not be the same. Leave, let us not be the same, but change in Jesus' name. Speak a word to me and through me, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for joining us um, at the River of God, located at 3833C South Crater Road, Petersburg, Virginia. God is up to something in his kingdom. And even in the midst of all of these challenging times we're dealing with and we're seeing right now, God is yet in the midst of it, orchestrating so his people will be able to show forth his glory by, by making it, by uh, not only surviving but thriving in the midst in the midst of a in the midst of a uh, in the midst of a world that's not thriving, God's people can yet thrive. Mm, let me say that again. In the midst of a world that is not thriving, God's people yet can thrive. And I'm excited about it. And I know He is willing to do it. Before we get into our message today. Um, I've been really uh, behind the eight balls, they say, lax or just slacking on our um, book of the month and I'm praying to get back on course with that. But I want to challenge you to challenge your young people, your teenagers uh, that are in your home to read this summer, to pick up a book and read everything uh, although you can access everything on the internet, there's something about having a book in your hand. Challenge your children to read so that one, they will become readers because the information, uh, we can't keep getting information in little clips and little blips and think we have it. No, Tim, Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved. Timothy, Paul uh, was talking about scripture, but he won't, but he didn't just stop there. We have to study so that we have cor the correct information. So when we're having uh, conversations, we can have intelligent conversations that will point others to Jesus Christ. And that comes, a lot of that comes through reading. And, uh, and I would even challenge to have them read 
out loud. It's not like they have to read out loud to you, but to read out loud to themselves. Why? This helps uh, develop our vocabulary. Anyone, they're just not children. Anyone helps to develop our vocabulary, our diction, and so forth. And so I want to uh, recommend a few books, uh, all of which I have read. And so, uh, again, I don't be recommending books that I haven't read. Um, this is by C.S. C.S. Lewis. It's a very familiar book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, your children will enjoy that. And all of these books are faith-based books. All of them are faith-based books. You can get them from Amazon. Uh, this is called Courageous Teens, uh, Living for God as Courageous Teens. How many know that our teenagers uh, are really sometimes at a disadvantage in school and things like that, where there may be other Christian teens, but because of peer pressure and things like that, uh, they don't stand up or they find it hard to live a godly life in the midst of an of an ungodly school system. And so that book will help them. Uh, this one here is a uh, guide to future battles. Every young man, uh, every young man must face. This is for boys. Um, every battle young men, now I have two teenage boys. So some of these books are uh, male uh, towards male gender, but there's a one, uh, the, uh, the accompany guide to this is one for girls. This is a guide to um, four battles uh, every uh, girl must face. I believe that's the name of it. Uh, this one's here. Uh, a young man's guide to discovering his Bible. A young man's guide to dis discovering his Bible. Now, I, I, I have a way I read the Bible and I study and, um, and, and but my boys are not the same. They're not me. And so they need to understand how to read the Bible for themselves, how to study, how to let it um, um, envelop them. And then here's a uh, young man's guide to making right choices. Your life, God's way. A young man's guide to making uh, right choices. And how many know there are a bunch of choices our children have to, have to make out there, but we want to put them in position to make the best choice. Amen. So again, those are just some books uh, that um, I'm going to be having um, my children read, and I would encourage you to do the same because our children, one, they need to read, but two, they need a godly character. They need moral principles that only come through Scripture, that only come through Scripture. This morning, I want to talk from the subject, I want to talk from the subject uh, moving forward, moving forward forward. Uh, this today is, uh, what is today's date? The 11th, the 12th of June. We have two weeks, a little more, two weeks and like a day left in the first six months of this year. And during this time of year, I always um, talk about it. I always take time to reflect on the first six months of the year uh, on goals that were set to be changed or where I am financially and things like that. And I think it's good for all of us uh, to look at that even spiritually, to see where we are with God um, if we're going to move forward. Because we cannot rely on the government. We can't rely on our jobs. We can't rely even on family. We can't rely on friends, um, the, on economics, because Everything is topsy-turvy. The, um, Russia is still invading um, Ukraine. That fighting is going on. There's still political upheaval around the world, even in this country. Uh, uh, the midterm elections are just around the corner, and so people are fighting uh, like never before, some physically fighting, um, some uh, verbally fighting. We, again, we're just coming... Um, few weeks ago from another terrible traumatic school shooting and and we've had um, other scares since in that same geographical location in Texas there was a young man walking to his high school with a automatic weapon and someone in their job saw him out the window 
and it, they couldn't see for sure, but it kind of looked like he had a rifle or automatic weapon, and they called the police, and sure enough, he was on his way to his high school. Now, he said he was doing something else or whatever, but we don't know what he was doing. But what we do know is that God is still in charge, and I can't explain everything to you. Uh, uh, if you want to hit me up, we can talk about why good things happen to bad people because that 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 uh, why bad things happen to good people because that does happen. Um, Satan is still in charge of this world, um, but but he cannot overrule God. But his uh, his authority still rests in this world because of the sin of Adam and Eve. But God can protect his people in the midst of this world. And so we want to move forward in God. We want to draw closer to him. Excuse me. <clears throat> the closer we draw to him, the closer he draws to us so that we can get, the, uh, uh, get everything that God would have us to get out of this life, but yet be in uh, unity with him, yet walking in purpose, walking the way he would have us to walk so that we can do this together. Uh, Joshua comes to mind th this morning, and I'm just going to start, just going to read a very familiar passage of scripture, Joshua um, um, 14, and it says this, excuse me, Joshua 24 and 14, starting at the 14th verse, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. For ye have, for if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua here in this 24th chapter is making his farewell address. He's no, he has, uh, doesn't have long to live. Uh, the preceding chapter in chapter 23rd, he goes over, um, God bringing the people out of Egypt and giving them rest and giving them the promised, uh, land. Uh, he talks about that he has, God has given them the promised land, but yet they haven't conquered all of it. They haven't fully taken possession. They haven't fully maximized the blessing that God has given them. He, God said, I've given you all of this land. Now you need to go and possess it. And some of the tribes have not yet gone and possessed their land. And Joshua basically is saying, what are you waiting for? Why are you still sitting here? You need to go forward. You need to move forward and walk up right before God and get what he has for you. Uh, in the book of 2 Kings, there was four leprous men sitting outside the, the gate. And they said one to another because the city was under siege. And they said one to another, why sit we here and die? Why stay in the same position, doing the same thing, having the same conversation, looking at the same conditions, having the same mentality? Uh, and they and they gave in, and they took an evaluation as Joshua was doing here with the people. These um, these four lepers men took an evaluation. They said this: Look, if we go back in the city, there's famine in the city, there's starvation in the city. We know that there's death in the city. If we sit here. We don't have any resources. Things are not getting any better. It's all the same. Um, we're in the middle. We're not doing anything. We're not progressing. We're not going back. If we sit here long enough, and if you stay in the same position long enough, you will die. And they said, if we sit here, we will die. And people today are, are looking at the physical sense of dying. But yet you can stand still and sit still in the position where you become the walking dead. You're not a living. You're just existing. And then they said one to another, you know what? Uh, if we go forward, the Syrian host is there. They said, but if we go forward, we, we can take a chance and see what's going to happen. If we wind up getting there and we die, we died attempting to live. Oh gosh, that'll preach right there. We died attempting to live. And so they picked themselves up and they went forward. And when they and as they moved forward, watch this. When they moved forward, God moved. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, read the text carefully. God did not do anything 
to the host, to the enemy, until the people of God moved. And I come to tell you that God, we're not waiting on God as much as God is waiting on us. Uh, we're not, we're, God is not uh, um, um, uh, moving and doing stuff. And I'm just waiting on God, uh, waiting on God. No, God is waiting on us. And they went forward and they, and as they went forward, the text says that God made a noise in the atmosphere and the Kings uh, thought that other Kings were coming against them and they got scared and they ran off and left all their spoil for the four lepers men, the four lepers men, four men that were outsiders, four men that were outcasts, four men that were sick, four men uh, that, that, that was con that were considered unclean, wind up saving the whole nation. Why? Because the unclean move forward, the dirty move forward, the dying move forward, the less than move forward. They pushed forward and said, we're going to take a chance. I tell you today, going into the last six months of this year, you need to do an evaluation of where you are and you need to say, you know what? I'm going I'm to take a chance. What have I got to lose? It can't get any worse than it is right now. I know some of you are saying, you know, have you seen the gas prices pass it? Yep, I've seen them. I've, pay, I've paid them. But yet I'm still going to pay my tithes. I'm still going to pay my offer. But ha have you seen the um, the grocery store? I saw the other day somebody had, it was, a, um, you know, like this to be a Walmart. I believe it was Walmart, one of the stores. A uh, pack of chicken legs like this, just the drumsticks, $30. Thank God that you got the $30 to get it. And then when you eat it, say your blessings over it and then ask God to stretch it. See, we, we, we act like as people in general that no one has ever went through hard times before. How did our parents and our foreparents make it? I tell people this all the time. I remember my mother. She would take a T-bone steak my other brother was gone, so it was uh, my brother Chris and myself and my mother. She'd take a T-bone steak and put a little oil in the pan. She'd bake it in. She'd cut up some onions and some potatoes and put in the and put in and put in there. And um, um, and she, she may have made some macaroni cheese or, or some collard greens or something to go along with it, some string beans or whatever. This is the miracle portion because she moved forward in God. I would that was maybe like nine or ten. My brother, he, he was like 14. He's four years older than me. So here you have two boys eating and a grown woman eating a T-bone steak. And guess what? We would have some left over, y'all. Because when you move forward in God, he stretches what you already have. Don't ask me how he do it, but he does it. And so, and so yet we're all dealing with all of these situations going on, but we're not the first people to have to deal with it. And we won't be the last, but we can last through it. We can make it through it. I say this all the time. You and I were born for this day and this time that could that that died 20, 30 years ago. They couldn't handle this day. If you're here this day, God has given you the grace and the ability to handle this time. But you got to move forward in it. Joshua here, I just want to read a little bit of, of Joshua here in this 24th chapter. The 16th verse says this, and after Joshua got finished um, talking to people, 16th verse says this, and the people answered and said to Joshua, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he, is, he, is, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went among all the people through whom we passed. Watch this. He said, they said, it is God that preserved us and kept us all the way wherein we went. It is God that has preserved and kept you to this day, to this June 12, 20. 22. It is God that has kept you to this day. And if he's a, and if he, and if he was had the ability to keep you to this day, he has the ability to keep you as you move forward. 
So 18 verse says, and the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we serve the Lord for he is our God. They say he drove out the Amorites. Sometimes, you know it, sometimes we should not dwell in the past, but we should reflect on the victories. We should not dwell on the past, uh, uh, um, especially the negative things of the past, but we got to dwell on the victory. You got to dwell on what God brought you from last time, how he delivered you, how he made a way out of no way, how he opened doors for you, how he put, how he orchestrated stuff for you, how he, mm, how he prepared stuff for you, who you needed him to prepare it for you. Our son, our older son, is away at a um, camp with the um, um, Naval Academy for a week, and it costs something like six hundred something dollars, something something like that. Uh, great opportunity, great opportunity. And my wife said she was just sitting there one day, and she said she just I think she called or email or something. Said, "Dude, you got a scholarship." Called her back a couple days later. They said, "Congrat," said, "Congratulation." Now, 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 I know y'all y'all think, but Pastor Randy, wow, but this is this the way I think. This is the way I think. Somebody years ago, set up the scholarship program, not knowing that they were setting up the scholarship program for Chauncey Samoa and Randy James. But God, our father, saw years ago that he going to need a scholarship this day. And so if you don't, when you move forward, God starts moving and orchestrating stuff in your path. No, it doesn't mean you won't have to go up some hills. No, it don't mean you won't have um, some mountains. No, it doesn't mean that everything will be smooth. But what will happen is because God is orchestrating it. Uh, 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 um, 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 uh, there's a scripture that talks about uh, um, that, that God, he, he, he makes a way. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm drawing a blank here. And where it talks about um, he, he navigates our path through the shallow waters, through the deep waters. He, he, he gives us, he makes a way out of no way. He creates ways. He opens up ways. He, 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 he gives divine passageways. Oh God, I love that. He gives divine passageways for his people. He told the children of Israel at the Red Sea, he says, Moses, stop all this hollering. Get up, get up. Yep, that good. That was a good prayer meeting. Get up and move forward. Moses didn't say, God, where are we going? He got up and started moving forward in the water. Told the people, go, go forward. I'm quite sure if Randy James would have been there. Moses, I can't swim. That hesitation may have messed me up. Because I'm looking at my ability. Watch this, what Joshua says here, 19 verse right here, right here. Joshua says this, he says to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is holy. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your trespasses nor your sins. What he's saying is you cannot serve God. What he's saying is you can't do it under your own power. Moses, tell the people to go forward into the, into the sea. That's not logical, Moses. It don't make no sense. Um, you know there was a shortcut back there, Moses, that we didn't take. So I don't know why we didn't go that way. And so, and you telling us to go forward in the thing. You got to move forward. Watch this. Mm. We have to move forward so God can move for us. I wish somebody write that down. Uh, write that down and put it in the, in the comment section. We have to move forward so God can move for us. I love that. I love that. AJ, I need a t-shirt with that on it. Don't it? We have to move forward so God can move for us. But if there is no movement on our part, on our part, there's nothing for God to do. Why would he prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies if you don't get in the presence of your enemies? It's no need. God don't do stuff just to be doing stuff. He don't. He don't. He doesn't do anything just, just because of just because. No, everything has a divine purpose. Because if God did that, then God would be shallow. And God, our God isn't shallow. Joshua says to them, if ye, 20 verse, if ye forsake the Lord 
and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. Watch this. I know people say, oh, the devil did it. That, that don't sound like the devil did. He says, he, talking about the Lord, will turn and do you hurt and consume you after he have done you good. And consume you after he has done you good. How many of you, how many of you, know, how many of you know God has done you some good? How many of you know that you want him to do you some more good? Then you got to serve him. You got to move forward in him. You see, I, 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 as I was laying this morning and I was thinking about these scriptures uh, and reflecting uh, where, where I am, I got I, I have some things I have to move forward. And I got to move forward and I got to move forward in them before the end of 2022 that my 2023 may be blessed. See, um, 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 some uh, some preachers, and there's nothing wrong with that, so don't, uh, what I'm about to say, um, and they teach it in Bible college, they have what they call preaching calendars, which basically they set up what they're going, they may not know the exact um, title of the message, but the theme of the message is they're going to be preaching uh, throughout the year. Most preachers uh, that uh, that work that way, by the end of September, they already know, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, throughout 2023, they already know um, what theme they're going to be preaching from each month of the year and have already started working on, on researching. Now, now, they, they do leave room for the Holy Ghost to change and, 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 and maneuver and things like that. So it's not so rigid like that. But what I'm saying is they can't wait to December 31st and start talking about, I got to work on my preaching calendar but, uh, for, for 2023 because they're already behind. And we have to stop being uh, people that are behind. I like to sit back and relax just like anyone else. Maybe even more so in some cases. But there's some things you just got to pick up and you got to move forward on it. And moving forward, watch this, moving forward. The people here, God had given them the promised land, but they hadn't conquered all the promised land that he had promised to them. They hadn't driven out all the enemies like he told them to, but they still had to move forward in it. Don't get discouraged moving forward because you're moving forward with baby steps. I would rather have you take five baby steps than to try and jump up and take one large human step, one large adult step and hurting yourself and then wind up regressing. And then and then and then don't let people that are not invested in your forward momentum uh comment, dictate, or evaluate your progression. See, because if you because if somebody that's not doing anything, they will always see something wrong you're doing. And it's not because you're really doing anything wrong, it's because they're not doing anything. So the wrong they really see, the wrong they really see is the wrong of them not doing anything. It has nothing to do with you. The fact of the matter is you you moving forward, even at baby steps, even taking um, many, many steps is more than what they're doing. And it's a reflection on the uh, is a reflection on the lack of progress they're making. So in order for them to feel better about them not doing anything, they have to they have to put down what you're doing. But Joshua told them, said, you can move forward, but you got to do it with the Lord. You can't do it by by yourself. Understand why Joshua was saying this, right? Let's go back. Let's go back to uh, verse 15. He says this, watch this. And if it seem evil to you, serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood and the gods of the Amorites and lands whose you dwell. He says the gods on the other side of the flood. Now you got to remember when they first got to the edge of the promised land, because of the people um, sin, God made them go um, uh, walk around in the wilderness for 40 years until that generation, those 20 and above, died off. 
So even while they were walking under the punishment of God for 40 years in the wilderness, they still had some of Egypt in them that they passed down to their children. And Joshua saying, we're here in the promised land. We're doing this, that, and the other. We're doing that. He said, but y'all still got this junk with you. You knew in 2021 that that certain person, you wasn't supposed to bring them with you in the 22. You knew that they, you knew that they weren't supposed to be part of your club no more. You knew they weren't supposed to be part of your party. But you brought them along because that's my friend, and I don't want to hurt them, and I don't want to hurt nobody, hurt no, hurt, no, hurt, hurt nobody's feelings, hurt their feelings, and get and, and and pray for them to get well, so that you can be what God wants you to be, so you can go where He wants you to go, so you can do what He wants you to do. Dead weight is still dead weight, whether it's dead weight in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two, it's still dead weight. Watch this, verse 23. He says this. Now, therefore, Joshua says to them, put away, said he, the strange which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord. We got to put away the strange gods. He's, these people have been walking in the wilderness for 40 years. That means, and because, you know, if you, if you go back to the sin of the sin of Achan when he took the Babylonian um, um, garments and things like this. So they all this stuff they weren't supposed to have with them. So they still got some figurines, if you want to call them that, some uh, um, uh, some gods made up of wood and gold and stuff. And some of them, in the midst of being in the people of God, they was worshiping false gods. That's what Joshua was saying here. Joshua said, look, in order for you to get everything that God wants you to get, you got to put away the strange gods. He's been merciful to you. He 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 hasn't chopped you at the chopped you off, chopped, cut you off at the knees. But what I'm telling you now, for this next level, this next place you're going to in God, for you to move forward, you got to put away the strange gods. What strange gods are keeping you from total inheritance of the promise? What strange gods? What strange gods? And strange gods could be anything. They could be people, could be places, could be things, could be shows, could be food, it, whatever. It, it could be jobs, uh, could be family. Whatever is keeping you from moving forward in God. A, a, a good lit, litmus test of, 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 of whether this thing is really should be with you is as, um, as you're moving forward, See whether or not it's weighting you down. See whether or not as it, it, it makes it harder for you to move forward. And the harder you try to move forward, the more it try to pull, it tries to pull uh, you back, or the more resistant. If it's if that's what it is, I'm gonna tell you today. Uh, is I'm liking it to a strange God because you cannot, we cannot maximize our relationship with God and all that he has for us and all that he wants for us and to move where he wants us to move and be where he wants us to be and do what he wants us to do and go where he wants us to go and experience what he wants us to experience. We cannot move forward carrying dead weight, carrying the strange gods. I'm just throw this out there because I know it's, but, but they, I just want to clear it up. My Christian brother and sisters that say that Jesus Christ, yet you dabble in the, in the, uh, in, in the African spiritualism, honoring ancestors and, 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 and worship them. Uh, one of my um, good pastor friends of mine, he was doing, um, he, he teaches school and said he was doing a check on one of their students, he and uh, another uh, teacher. And they went by the house and the um, parents were very friendly and everything. And the, and the mother said, the answer to the world is prayer and burning sage. The answer to the problems of the world is prayer and burning and burning sage. We have to watch that. Because there's no way in the Bible we're supposed to be burning, burn, burning sage to ward off spirits. 
The Bible says we rebuke the devil. We plead the blood of Jesus. We have to be careful because what happens is we start intertwining our Judeo-Christian values and what and our and our and Bible teaching. I'm not talking about um, denomination teach denominational teaching. I'm talking about the Bible. And we start inviting these other things in, trying to accommodate, trying to make people feel good, and trying to make people uh, under, under, uh, uh, feel welcome. And we wind up getting something that looks like Christianity, but it's not. And we're wondering why we're not moving moving forward. Well, we got something. It, it, we got something that don't go in the mix. We have something that's gonna go that that, that that doesn't go in the in, in the in the in the pot. You ever taste somebody make some soup or something like that, but they use an ingredient that is not normally in soup, and you can taste it, and the soup doesn't is not altogether bad, but you're like that something in there don't 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 taste right. That's what, and that's what happens in our Christian walk. And so what happens is there's a confusion in the spirit. And we're like, God, what's, what's going on? And God, God says, you got strange gods. You got strange gods with you. And you got to put them away in order to inherit, in order to move forward, in order to experience all he wants us to experience. We cannot move forward, not, call it, not as Bible-believing Christians and have all this other stuff mixed up in it. No. Christianity is not a, is not another form uh, of Islam. Islam is not a, a form of Christianity. No, the two don't that no. And 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 any of my Christian brothers and sisters that uh in order for you to pre preach Christianity, you preach it from a standpoint of hate and anger, then that's not true Christianity. And you're going to have to give an account to God. We're supposed to draw men to the, uh, draw men to the faith. We're not supposed to scare them to the faith. Oh, I better get saved. God is going to God's going to kill me kill me dead. No, that's not the kind of God we serve. We serve a loving God. Yeah, he can get he can get he can get angry and have to and have to deal with us, but he'd rather not go that way. And so that's not what we preach. Jesus preached love. It was tough love, but it was love. And so we have to preach the same thing. And so we, I, I want you to move forward. I want you to take this, uh, I'm taking it, and look at some stuff. You're going to have to make some hard, we're going to have to make some hard decisions to move forward. We're going to have to chop some stuff. We're going to have to chop some wants, even some desires. We're going to have to humble ourselves. We're going to have to do some things that out of the ordinary, we're going to have to push ourselves and then if you're working with someone else and you're trying to move forward and you're trying to push one another and motivate one another, that's a great thing. Then ask God how to talk to one another. Lord, give me the right words to say to them to, um, to, to help them move forward. And sometimes we need that. We need that. We, we need that from one another. We are encouragers of one another. We're supposed to push one another. We're supposed to pray for one um, one one another, supposed to uplift one another. Joshua says, "You gonna serve the Lord? Don't come in there. Don't come in here no halfway. You gonna serve the Lord? Then you need the help of the Lord to serve the Lord." He said, "But you got to put away these strange gods." And the people said to him in the twenty first verse. People said to Joshua, "Nay, but we will serve the Lord." And Joshua said to the people, "Your witness against yourself." that ye have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He says, now therefore put away the strange gods from among you and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve, we will serve and his voice we will obey. They said, we're going to serve him. We're going to obey him. Joshua said, incline your heart to him. Why? So you can get what he wants you to have. You can get God's mindset. 
anything that we need to do moving forward, to push forward, to put ourselves in a better position to show forth God's glory in this world, anything we're doing, he will help us. He wants to help us. He wants to put us in a position to maximize our potential in him. And so what we're going to do, we got to lay it before him. we got to look at it ourselves and say, oh, okay, yep, right there, I need to tighten that, tighten that up. And then we need to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, the areas that I'm not seeing or the areas that I'm seeing but I don't want to deal with, I need you to help me deal with them. I need you to help me face them. And then God will help us and we acknowledge them and then he will give us a plan and then he will give us the ability to stick with the plan. Six months is a long time to, to, to stick with the plan. But if you stick with the plan, you stick with the plan from the, uh, from the, from the Father, watch what, he'll, watch what he will do. If nothing else, I guarantee you'll have more peace. You'll have more peace. Why will you have more peace? Because things uh, um, will be, uh, I said it a few weeks ago, I believe it, um, about uh, Sunday morning, I believe it, um, we'll be better organized. And God will work for us. Amen. Amen. May God bless you is my prayer. I pray the word of God has blessed you this morning. Move forward. Moving forward. We got to do it. We got to do it. I want to challenge you this morning uh, to do something. Uh, and it, it is not for the offering either. Uh, it's something else. I was thinking about this the other day. I have a, a nephew by marriage and uh, he and, his, and my niece they just had a baby. And I, and I, thought, of, and I thought about it. Why don't you find some young man that's maybe a new father and send him a Father's Day card? That's a new father. You don't have to be close to him. It doesn't have to be family. Just send him a, 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 father's, a father's Day card. I mean, he probably, you know, they probably get a father, you know, the wife or his mother probably would buy him a Father's Day card or something like that. But something the Lord told me yesterday, how many men, uh, now there are some men, that in some mind, in some people's minds, uh, don't deserve Father's Day cards. And I, can under, and I can understand that. But maybe if you gave them a Father's Day card, maybe it'll start moving them toward ability. Why don't you do that? Find you, find you somebody, a cousin or somebody, somebody you work with or something like that, and just, and just drop it. And, let, and let's, let's, let's do it right. Go get the card, put it in the mail to them, you, you know. And let, and let it be a surprise in, in, to them. And maybe, you know, put them a little $5 uh, gift card in there. And let them know that fatherhood is important, is extremely important, more so now than ever before. Again, this is Pastor Randy James of the River of God. May God bless you. This is my prayer. I pray the word of God has been a blessing to you. Uh, look, if you're able to, please sow a seed into the ministry. Uh, you can sow through our cash app as dollar sign river seed or Givelify, the river of God, or you can mail uh, um, a check, 3833 C, South Crater Road, Petersburg, Virginia, 23805. May God bless you is my prayer. Until next time, bye-bye.